Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome to another one of my World of Tanks replays. Um, in this one, yeah, that's right, that's the Bat Chat 155 French Tier 9 Artillery piece. I'm going to be a scumbag. Now, uh, putting up with my scumbaggery, we have a couple of guys from the 102nd platoon. I was trying to do some of the um, artillery missions, the artillery personal missions. And so we have got uh, Pedestroika and Guzzlers who are giving me a hand. Guzzlers you may have seen in a couple of videos before, also previously known as Craig Von Red. So, spoiler alert, Guzzlers isn't going to have the best game in this particular match. But Pedestroika is, and I'm not going to do too bad myself either. So, with that in mind, and please try and ignore any replay bugs with regard to the targeting reticule, we're going to try and see what we can do. So this is a tier 10 match. It's a very tier 10 match. And we are here on Prokhorovka. Hello, Mr. T57 Heavy. How are you doing? Sploosh. Um, we are here on Prokhorovka. Yes. Um, so my... Oh, there goes Guzzlers, unfortunately, as he just got completely obliterated by the enemy artillery. Uh, my Bat Chat 15555 is not fully upgraded. Um, certainly wasn't when I played this game. It's still not even now. It takes quite a lot of XP to upgrade the gun on that thing. Um, so I've got the same gun that I was using on the Lorraine 155.55. And honestly, uh, 51? Whichever. And honestly, even when you do upgrade the gun, it's only, I think, the aim time and the reload that get better. Not that I'm complaining about that. The average damage, the alpha damage and whatnot stay the same. And the explosion radius on this gun is not particularly impressive. So this is a relatively small artillery gun. Uh, that's that's in common with a lot of the French artillery pieces. And you can see there I got a direct hit on a T-57 Heavy. And while that T-57 Heavy may not have appreciated the direct hit, at least it only did 500 damage instead of more. I mean, it only hit him for about the same he would have gotten hit by if, say, he was shot by an IS-7 or a mouse or any of those sort of 130, 128 millimeter guns. Took that shot as I thought the Centurion was going to move forward a little bit more, but alas, he backed off. And I really should have relocated after firing that shot. But there we go. I didn't. I'm an idiot. Um, so far, the scoreline is 1-2. If you have a look at the minimap, we haven't actually sent anybody over to the hill, which does not bode particularly well for our chances in this game. Now, Pedestroika is in his T-54. And he is actually going to be playing effectively the role of a scout this game. He does get some damage done. You can just see he put a shot into that M103. But he's going to be spending a lot of his time scouting for other machines. There are quite a few tier 10 tank destroyers in this match. And of course, there's also a couple of artillery pieces on my team in addition to myself. We've got the tier 10 French artillery piece, the Batchat 15558. For those who get the two confused, the tier 10 is the one that gets the four round autoloader. The tier 9 has a single shot version of the same gun. Going for a shot there on the enemy T-54, but my shell doesn't even land in the same vicinity as him, so there we go. So basically so far I've gotten one hit on a T-57 Heavy and that's about it. I haven't really done any additional damage. Trying to take a bead on these American heavy tanks as ideally we don't want them pushing up over the railway line if we can avoid it. But I wasn't reloaded in time which is a bit of a shame. So switching my attention to where they are likely going to be popping over the ridge line. And hoping that I can get a bit of damage in on them as they do so. Just waiting. We've got an E100 who would be playing spotter. And there's the T110E5. And that was not a combined damage roll, as it turns out. I actually managed to penetrate that guy with a HE round. I think it was through the roof or something. Average damage of this gun on a penetration is 1250. So on the one hand, the guy was unlucky to be penetrated by my HE round. But on the other hand, he was lucky not to have taken more damage. But he did die nonetheless. So, that was a little bit lucky on my part, and that kind of deletion of the enemy T-125, um, or one of the enemy T-125s, has really given the other American heavies that pushed over the railway line pause for thought. 
their friend went over with all of his health and within a few seconds had just been removed from the game. So there we go. I got a little bit lucky with that shot, which is always nice when you're playing artillery and you're the one who gets a bit lucky. Trying to get a bead on this centurion. I take the shot. The shot? <laughs> I take the shot blind as I couldn't quite see him. I probably didn't do any damage, but I thought it was worth a punt. Enemy T110 E5 is still down there, still trying not to get shot at as much as he can. And I'm going to try and take a bead on this guy. Really need someone to spot him. Now, at this point, honestly, we're down in terms of raw, uh, of, of kills. Our team is now surrounded. They are all down here in this corner of the map. They didn't really spread out. And so this is going to be potentially really quite awkward for us to win this game. Switching my attention to the E100 on the basis that he's actually out in the open. He's a big tough target, but even so, let's try and put some damage in on him. Lining up me shot, someone manages to shoot him, and there we go. That 901 this time wasn't all us, that was a combined damage roll from a couple of people hitting him at once. Now, in this uh, instance, me not moving is entirely intentional, between shots I mean, because the enemy team are close enough that if I move, I risk getting spotted, so I am intentionally staying still and relying on my camo net to do its thing. This is a patch 9.13 game, so there we go, another direct hit on a T1 10 E5. So the tier 10 waffle thrower was still in this, uh, still in the game. He manages to delete the enemy T57 heavy or one of the enemy T57 heavies. And I managed to get a shot in on that T110 E5, but again, it hit for 570. Yeah, that was a reasonable amount, but again, it's not massively more than you could take from heavy tanks of that, um, of the tier. And if you look at the sort of heavy tank damage that goes around, uh, I'm a tier 9 tank, so you have the type 4 heavy, the Japanese at tier uh, 9, which gets 600 alpha on its gun at the top end, and... 440 up to 500 is relative, is not too unusual um, in terms of raw damage. And often this gun against heavy targets will do kind of a couple of hundred damage with a direct hit. And because your splash is so pathetic, you really do need the direct hits in order to be doing a great deal of much. Have a go at the Centurion, and as you can see there, I managed to get a close miss, a near miss, but didn't actually manage to achieve anything didn't do any damage. The guy checked just in time. Interestingly, the scoreline is still even, and despite us all being clumped up in one corner, the enemy team haven't really overwhelmed us or really pushed into us that much. They seem to be keeping us at arm's reach, which given the number of tank destroyers and artillery we have can only work in our favour. Now I try that shot on the enemy E100, but I'm foiled by the uh, blasted trains in the way. What are you going to do? So that didn't work. So I'm trying to get some damage in on, in on this T110 E5. Alas, he's behind a rock. And the French artillery, especially at close range, they're going to have such a flat shell trajectory that I certainly can't shoot over cover to put any damage in on him. So trying once again to see if I can pre-aim at where this Centurion Action X might put his head up. And hopefully I can put some damage in onto him. And it all goes quiet. And here you can see Pedestroika has moved out in his T-54. He is our eyes and ears. We're relying on him to spot the bad guys for us, basically. We do have an E-50M around as well in the vicinity, who's also actually, to be fair to him, moving up. But with so many tank destroyers and artillery on our team, well, I mean, of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven remaining tanks, over half of them are artillery or tank destroyers. E50M finds the enemy Centurion and wrecks him. So that's him done. And that means we're actually winning this game, which is not something I expected to be able to say. If the enemy had some light tanks remaining, I imagine this would be a much more awkward game to play. But, as it is, all they've got remaining 
a two artillery, a couple of heavy tanks, a not very stealthy tank destroyer, and a medium tank. So actually, there we go, 332 that time. Actually, the number of tanks remaining, or the type of tanks remaining on the enemy team, kind of works in our favour a little bit. So there we go, 332 into the front of that T110E5. Not a huge amount of damage, but it was damage. Trying to nickel and dime this guy to death. And again, I'm being careful about how much I move, because I don't want to get spotted by the enemy. And that would be very bad for my continued existence. For some reason, I divert my attention away just as the T110E5 moves. Um, and our E50M has actually made it toward the enemy base and found, among other things, the enemy SU-14-2 artillery piece. It would be really nice to take this guy out. And there we go. A little bit of luck means that I get a nice direct hit to just remove that SU-14-2 from the game and get a little bit of revenge for guzzlers who succumbed to that guy earlier on. Found the tier 10 waffle thrower, which is an artilleryman's dream. If I could get a direct hit on him, I would wreck his face. Shoot. Oh, someone got a direct hit and someone only splashed. I'm not sure which way round it was. Judging by the damage um, at the end of the game, though, uh, as you'll see, I'm pretty sure I was the one who just got a little bit of splash damage. And it was the other artillery piece, the tier 10, who managed to get the direct hit. But there we go. So, four of them left. We have a two-tank advantage. And there's the E100. This is the guy on not a fat lot of health, who I tried taking out earlier on. Now, this time he's on the reverse side of a hill, but I don't have to worry about it in the end, as the friendly T110E5 puts him to rest. Trying to see if I can take out this waffle thrower. That looks like another near miss. Might have splashed him for a little bit more damage. And there we have the T110E5, the enemy T110E5, finally having pushed up. Pedestroika takes out the Waffle Thrower, um, and it looks like the T110E5 was trying to take advantage of our Waffle Thrower reloading, but our Yag Tiger wasn't having any of that. Kills the T110E5, and now it's just the T92 artillery piece remaining on the enemy team. Somehow, it looks like we're going to win this match. As our T110E5 says, how the F did we win this? I have absolutely no idea. But I'm not complaining. I I'm okay with a win. Somehow the enemy team just never really came at us. They just kept the engagement at longer range, which we had quite a few tank destroyers and artillery pieces, and a couple of medium tanks who were happy to act as spotters. I mean, that just played into our hands. So that seemed to be a little bit of a mistake. Pedestroika puts a shot into the T92. I fire before I realize Pedestroika is going to go in for a close range engagement. Almost team kill my platoon mate there, which would have been a bit sad. But actually, um, I'm rewarded with a kill on the T92 as well. So I've managed to take out both of the enemy artilleries to round out the game. And quite a long game it was too. So, let's go and have a look at the post-battle results for this. So, that actually ended up being an ace tanker for my tier 9 French bat chat. Didn't have a completely... Uh, pimped out crew either so it was quite nice to get also managed to complete one of the personal missions it was um it was the mission i was trying to complete it was a platoon one joint offensive i can't remember the exact requirements but we managed to get it done and i managed a reasonably good spread of damage across a variety of targets and a very lucky shot on that t110e5 Pedestroika finished top of our team with 1833 damage done 1196 base experience and 8,245 assistance damage. So, kudos to Pedestroika for acting as our team's eyes and ears. Uh, credit card captain also did well. 5,171 damage in his tier 10 waffle thrower. I managed 3,629 damage. Two kills, 977 base experience. A reasonable amount of that damage, if you have a look, was against tier 10 targets. In fact, with the exception of the SU-14-2, it was all against tier 10 targets, which will give me an XP multiplier. Guzzlers, unfortunately, got deleted right at the beginning of that game by the enemy SU-14-2, so unfortunately, he didn't have a particularly fantastic game. 16 shots fired, 7 hits, 7 pens, 4 splash for that damage count, 
most of which was from long range. There was just a bit of damage, I think, against a T-110 E5 that was from less than 300 meters. Also picked up a thousand assistance damage. How did you manage to do that? Well, it turns out we managed to get a bit of tracking on the E100 and a bit of tracking on the uh, tier 10 waffle thrower. So we managed over a thousand assistance damage as well, which was nice. Take away our ammunition resupply costs and we made a 10,000 credit profit and with times two experience for the first win of the day. When you throw in the free XP as well, that was over 2,000 experience in total, which was fairly nice for an artillery piece. So there we go. There's my scummy replay for now out there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, despite it being an artillery replay. If you did, by all means, feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel. And I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.